Are we overdoing it with hyaluronic acid and why is it in every single product? Exfoliants, toners, antioxidant serums, cleansers, moisturizers. Can you have too much of a good thing? Why are brands putting it in everything? We're gonna get into all of that in this video, but before we do, make sure you're subscribed if you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist and hit the little bell notification because that lets you know when my videos go live. Definitely give me a follow over on TikTok and Instagram because I'm very consistent with skincare and care content on those platforms. Hyaluronic acid, it is a humectant. What the heck does that mean? Well, in skincare products, it works to attract water into the top layers of the epidermis. And the end result of that is an improvement in the moisture content of your skin. And that leads to smoother, brighter, more hydrated, plumper, firmer skin. And one thing people don't realize is that when the moisture content of the top layers of the skin is improved, well, the natural exfoliation, the turnover processes go a lot Lot more smoothly. As it increases the water content in the top layers of the skin, you get a plumping effect that's gonna smooth out fine lines and wrinkles. Now, it's certainly not the only humectant on the block. In skincare products, you will find various other humectants in moisturizing products alongside emollients that smooth the skin and occlusives that trap all of this hydration in place. So why hyaluronic acid? It's very well tolerated. It's unlikely that you are going to mount any kind of immune response against it. And so it's well tolerated across a wide array of skin types. And hyaluronic acid complements the goals of a variety of skincare ingredients. There are various forms of hyaluronic acid in skincare products. The smaller the size of the hyaluronic acid, the deeper it can penetrate. And in theory, as it penetrates more deeply into the skin, it brings with it an increased risk of irritation. We know that applying hyaluronic acid to the skin is a significant benefit in the healing of wounds. And a lot of the research that we have on topically applied hyaluronic acid comes from models of wound healing. So why is it frequently paired alongside so many ingredients that we may be seeking out. Topical vitamin A, as I like to call it, the category of anti-aging ingredients that includes retinol, retinaldehyde. Hyaluronic acid can actually complement these. These ingredients help to train the skin to turn over more efficiently. That's gonna reduce pore clogging. And with long-term consistent use, they stimulate collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin. That is why they have a wrinkle smoothing effect. These ingredients also can remove sun damage and can lighten up hyperpigmentation, whether it be related to sunspots or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, like from a healing acne mark. These forms of topical vitamin A not only improve the look of existing wrinkles by stimulating collagen production, but they actually can prevent the formation of wrinkles down the road because they help to put the brakes on upregulation of enzymes that are activated when we go out in the sun to chew up our collagen. So when used in conjunction with sun protection, they can help prevent wrinkles. By improving skin cell turnover, they help to to brighten up skin tone and even it out and smooth out skin texture. Why throw in hyaluronic acid then? Well, hyaluronic acid, because of its hydrating effects, it actually can benefit a vitamin A formula in that it can reduce irritation and dryness from this ingredient. If you've ever used retinol or retinaldehyde, you know they can be very drying and you can develop a lot of irritation, especially in the beginning. Having moisturizing ingredients that improve hydration in the skin can help minimize this dryness and irritation, making it easier to tolerate. Hyaluronic acid also has that hydrating effect that's going to help smooth out fine lines and wrinkles. So you get the improvement in collagen production and the prevention of wrinkles from the retinoid, but you also get a wrinkle smoothing effect that is more immediate with the plumping action of hyaluronic acid. Something people don't realize is that hyaluronic acid, because it improves the moisture content of the skin, ultimately that really helps your skin naturally turn over on its own better. So in conjunction with retinoid, you ultimately can get smoother skin that is less prone to pore clogging, blackheads, closed comedones, otherwise known as whiteheads, acne breakouts, and uneven texture. What about niacinamide? Why is it paired alongside niacinamide, otherwise known as vitamin B3? Niacinamide has many benefits for your skin. It's anti-inflammatory and it can help reduce uh, oxidative stress upon exposure to a variety of environmental stressors like pollution, ultraviolet radiation, visible light from the sun. In doing so, it can help 
uh, slow down premature skin aging and wrinkle formation. Because it's anti-inflammatory, it also is beneficial for acne. It can help with oiliness as well as improving the appearance of pore size. Niacinamide is also anti-redness, so it's a wonderful ingredient if you have rosacea, and it can help improve hyperpigmentation. Niacinamide likewise helps to improve the health of your skin barrier, and ultimately that too is going to help reduce irritation and dryness. So why throw in hyaluronic acid? They're actually a perfect pairing because they are both water-based ingredients. Hyaluronic acid, because it improves the moisture content of the um, top layer of the skin, ultimately that too helps with improving the health of the moisture barrier, keeping irritating things out. As it plumps up skin cells, it can diminish the appearance of pores just by space filling. So add in niacinamide, which also can diminish the appearance of pores. You have a nice synergy there with that pairing. A hyaluronic acid can help stimulate certain repair processes and also that barrier repair aspect of things from the improvement in hydration along with the niacinamide really is going to help uh, slow down premature aging due to exposure to a weakened skin barrier of environmental stressors. So a nice pairing in that regard. With age, our skin is a lot more prone to dryness because of weakening of the skin barrier and its repair abilities. So hyaluronic acid really just kind of helps nudge that in a better, healthier direction. It really leaves the skin looking a lot more glowy, dewy, and radiant. It's a temporary effect, but pair that with niacinamide, which also tackles hyperpigmentation and helps calm down redness, you really get a nice complexion correcting effect. So why the heck is hyaluronic acid in so many exfoliating products? Let's talk about that. First of all, one of my favorite exfoliating ingredients salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is oil soluble and it has an affinity for the oily surfaces of the skin, especially within your pores. It's a great ingredient for acne prone skin and it helps to break up sticky skin cell debris that is clogging your pores. Ultimately, that's going to help reduce blackheads and whiteheads and help control acne breakouts. Sal acid is also anti-inflammatory and because it's anti-inflammatory and because of its exfoliating effects, it can improve the look of hyperpigmentation. It's generally well tolerated. However, it can be drying and not everyone tolerates it. It can be irritating. So therein comes hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid can help improve the dryness aspect of salicylic acid and reduce irritation, making it easier to tolerate. You have the benefit of hyaluronic acid plumping up skin cells that likewise is just gonna improve the appearance of pores while you're also tackling blackheads, whiteheads, prominent pores with salicylic acid. And again, you're going to get better natural exfoliation when the moisture content is improved. Hyaluronic acid is improving the moisture content, supporting better skin cell turnover in conjunction with salicylic acid. Ultimately, that's going to give you smoother, more hydrated skin and reduce the formation of plugged up pores that lead to blackheads, whiteheads, and acne breakouts. What about glycolic acid? This is an alpha hydroxy acid, comes from sugarcane. It's very small in size, meaning it can penetrate the skin a little bit more deeply than other alpha hydroxy acids, and it's known to exfoliate the skin. It is a water-soluble ingredient, unlike salicylic acid, so it doesn't localize to the pores as readily. It kind of penetrates a little bit more deeply and throughout the skin to exfoliate. Ultimately, that improves a few things. It can improve skin texture by exfoliating away heaped up dry, rough skin. It also can improve skin tone by increasing the rate of shedding of just discoloration. And glycolic acid can end up boosting collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin, having an anti-aging wrinkle smoothing effect. Because it's an alpha hydroxy acid, it also works to hold water in the skin. It's a humectant, just like hyaluronic acid. Ultimately, that helps improve moisture content as well. Like salicylic acid, it can be drying and it can be irritating. Putting hyaluronic acid in there, which is solely a humectant, can help balance that dryness out further and also by attracting water to the top layers of the skin, you get that nice wrinkle smoothing effect and you also get an improvement in skin tone. Then you have lactic acid, another alpha hydroxy acid. Unlike glycolic acid, lactic acid is larger in size. Its action is more in improving uh, hydration as well as exfoliating dryness. It is a wonderful ingredient for sensitive, rough, textured skin. If you have keratosis pilaris, this is a well-established ingredient for improving that. 
uh, rough and bumpy skin that builds up around hair follicles, pores, on your arms, your face, your thighs, really anywhere on the body where you have hair, you can have keratosis pilaris. It's definitely an underrated ingredient in skincare products and amlactin is one that just flies under the radar, but it's actually a well-established anti-aging product for just improving the visible signs of skin aging on the body, whether it be your chest, uh, it likewise can exfoliate away and improve the look of sun damage, age spots, or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And it's also improving the moisture content. It likewise is a humectant, will soften the skin, and the long-term result is just better moisture content in the skin, and it starts to exfoliate on its own a lot better. Throw in hyaluronic acid there, which again is exclusively a humectant. You have better hydration in the stratum corneum, and you're better able to tolerate any potential irritation that can come alongside lactic acid. Hyaluronic acid through its hydrating effects combined with lactic acid, you're really going to get a nice softening and smoothing of the skin through this pairing. And last but not least, we'll talk about ceramides. Uh, you guys know one of my favorite products is CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. I also like the Equate Dupe version of it, which is about $5 less. Definitely check that one out. Ceramides are fatty acids that are important in uh, the the structure and maintenance of the skin barrier. And really their role is in helping to keep irritating things out and moisture in. Now with certain underlying conditions like rosacea, acne, and with age, ceramide levels decline, making you more prone to dryness, irritation, and inflammation. We know that applying ceramides to the skin can actually get things back on track in terms of ceramide levels in the skin. Ultimately, that improves the function of the moisture barrier, and the end result is improvement in dryness, irritation, and just smoother, softer, healthier skin. Now, hyaluronic acid, it's a humectant, totally different mechanism of action in comparison to ceramides, but it complements ceramides as an ingredient in that it's going to improve moisture content in the skin. That ultimately is going to help with better skin cell turnover, and you have better barrier function because of the ceramides. Together, that's a really nice uh, pairing in a moisturizing product for improving hydration, reducing dryness, and irritation. Hyaluronic acid helps to aid in inflammatory responses needed to repair damaged proteins in the skin, while ceramides, through their barrier supporting effect, help to reduce inflammation and irritation. So the end result is less inflammation, and that's gonna help in reducing triggers for inflammatory issues like acne, seborrheic dermatitis, and rosacea. So hyaluronic acid, it's obviously a great ingredient, but do, does everybody get along well with it? For the most part, it is very well tolerated. Again, it's not something that the immune system mounts an attack against like other ingredients, like fragrance, for example, is a common ingredient for people to develop allergy to. Hyaluronic acid has a few effects in the skin that may not always be the best thing for you. Because it improves moisture content in the skin, it also can enhance penetration of things. That's great in skincare products sometimes, but for some people it ends up being too much. That, penet that increased penetration can increase irritation. And for some people, for whatever reason, using multiple products with hyaluronic acid, especially smaller forms, seems to trigger a lot of irritation and redness. Uh, we don't have studies pointing to a mechanism, merely speculation that maybe it's the increased penetration of other ingredients or simply the increase in moisture content, the penetration of hyaluronic acid, these smaller forms, could they be triggering an inflammatory response? We really don't have good studies on this to fully understand it. There are people out there who find they just don't get along with products that have a lot of hyaluronic acid forms or they don't do well if they start using multiple products with hyaluronic acid, uh, including you know, combining cleansers, serums, moisturizers. They just don't, they don't derive benefit. Instead, they find that their skin becomes very irritable. So pay attention to your skin. I can't give out a blanket recommendation. You should avoid hyaluronic acid or it's the bee's knees. Obviously, it's not going to work out well for everybody, but generally speaking, it is a good ingredient with evidence to support its efficacy for improving the healing of wounds and for improving the look of 
uh, the skin in terms of an anti-aging ingredient for improving the look of fine lines and wrinkles. I mean, there's good research behind it as an ingredient for sure. We could always use more and understanding how it might negatively impact someone's skin, we definitely need more research in that area. What about using hyaluronic acid in a dry climate? Can hyaluronic acid end up drying out your skin too much? You know, this is an interesting point. Um, and I was taught that yes, using hyaluronic acid in the absence of occlusive ingredients um, can end up drying out the skin, especially in a dry climate because as a pull, water into the top layers of the skin, uh, well, if there's nothing on top sealing that water in, it's going to evaporate. And as it evaporates, it pulls more water out. That leads to more dryness, irritation, and inflammation. And if, if you live in a dry climate, the gradient to pull that is greater. Um, however, there's actually not good research to support that idea. Like if you go in the literature, you're not going to really find a paper that backs this idea up. I did come across one paper, which um, if I can find it again, I'll cite it down below, that actually did show an increase in water loss from the skin with hyaluronic acid alone applied topically in a skin equivalent model. So not on actual people, but in a model of human skin, they did show this. So there is, you know, that but it's not like the most robust research. The other thing about hyaluronic acid is how you use it. If you apply hyaluronic acid on top of like Vaseline, it's not gonna do anything for you. It's just gonna sit there and do nothing. Uh, if you apply hyaluronic acid over your moisturizer or over your sunscreen, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna sit there. The best way to use hyaluronic acid is to apply it to the skin when it's just a little bit damp that's gonna help it penetrate better and it's going to help it with pulling water into the epidermis. Uh, whereas if you just put it on dry skin, especially dry skin that already has a lot of products, it's not gonna penetrate particularly well. The water binding outcome is not, is not likely to, to occur. So you're probably just wasting product at that point and it, you know, it's not gonna have, have benefits. So the best way to use it is, is to apply it to the skin while it's a little bit damp. Now, because it is in so many products, you can really get hung up on how, how best to use a given product that has it. So it really kind of depends. If we're talking about serums that are just very lightweight, you may want to layer on a moisturizer on over it to ensure you are trapping in that hydration with an occlusive. But when we're talking about a moisturizer, it should already have the occlusives in the product as well as hyaluronic acid and some emollients. Pay attention to your skin and how it reacts to things. If you don't get along with it, then seek out products that don't have hyaluronic acid. That being said, can be tricky to find products free of hyaluronic acid. You know, for me personally, I use a lot of hyaluronic acid products and I've never had a problem, but recently I had a really adverse reaction to the Isden Hyaluronic Concentrate, but it also has salicylic acid, which again, great for pores and acne breakouts. It made my face very red. I tried it multiple times. This has just not worked out for me, which is a shame. Whereas I've used many other hyaluronic acid based products, serums over the years with no issue. So it could just be that formula overall. Again, you kind of have to pay attention. Is this a specific to a given product or is it actually just the ingredient across the board? A lot of times it's specific to a given product, how it's formulated overall. And the hyaluronic acid in that product may be enhancing the irritation in com combination with other ingredients. Let me know in the comments though, are you someone who does not get along with hyaluronic acid? Because I do get feedback that it doesn't, it doesn't sit well with everyone. So let me know in the comments. I hope this video was beneficial in explaining what it does, uh, why it's used alongside these various ingredients, how they work together nicely to yield these different outcomes. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.